What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we got round four with Maurizio of Cataclysm XDO and, of course, Invictus. Great to be able to talk with you, man. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's always great to have you here, man. We always uh, go down the rabbit hole of everything between death metal and Roman <laughs> mythology, so these are always my uh, favorite yeah. discussions to have. First and foremost, we got Unstoppable coming out very soon. Uh, being that this is the sort of like debut, this is going to be a, a lot of the first time people are hearing of Invictus and are really getting on board with it. Was there sort of like a preconceived vision of what you wanted this to sound like or was this a very experimental process? I think it's a little both. Um, I, I, I wanted to uh, do this project for a long time. Uh, it, it's, it's something that I always wanted to explore, but, you know, due to, to all the millions of things I got going on, I didn't have time. So it was it was the time issue. You know, I got a family, kids, uh, the Cataclysm, the ex -Deo, I run management, I have an agency in Los Angeles as well for touring. So I, I help all that stuff. So I'm always doing something. But the pandemic gave me that opportunity. And that if there was a positive in all of it was the idea that I, at least for me, that I could, you know, explore things i can't stand still um and i you know i was forced to so it gave me a lot of input to be able to uh to write i did see a lot of things that bothered me during the pandemic a lot of things that that didn't seem right to me and uh, i wanted to express myself on it um but it's a very personal record as well and at the same time it gave me the opportunity to explore different uh, paths in, in the music business and not only stay in the extreme lane and then move around a little bit with some clean vocals in there and a little bit of more mel melodic arrangements. A very modern record, but it has a lot of old school uh, roots in it too. Well, you mentioned that you tackle everything. This is also this is very personal, but there is also elements that we all know and love from your vocal style. Does the subject matter that you address on this album, does that alter how the music is performed in a way? Like if I were to listen to an instrumental version of a song, I could tell, okay, this is a personal one. This is an internal source of inspiration, and that's an external source of inspiration. Very good question. Um, so I, I think... Me and Chris, Chris Clancy wrote this record together, mainly. You know, Jeff was part of it as well. I mean, I, I don't do business and music without him by my side approving what we do as far as writing's concerned. I mean, he's he's my sidekick. I've had him forever. So he's, he's a partner of mine, a good friend. And uh, actually, I consider him more of a brother, you know. And uh, honestly, uh, it, it was this one, because I wanted to sound a little different than Cataclysm and Next Day, oh, I, I gave a lot of the songwriting uh, duties to Chris, you know, and Chris brought his emotional aspect of the way he thinks uh, and the way he writes. And it blended perfectly with what I wanted to do because I told him this is the this is the direction I want. And, and, and for this project, I, I, I want you to be yourself, but I want you to kind of understand that some parts are going to be dramatic and some parts are going to be very aggressive because that's the mood the world is in and that's the mood I am in as well. Like I, I feel that things are not right. And I wanted, I wanted the music to reflect a, a, a kind of almost a dysfunctional uh, situation where you're going from aggressiveness to sadness to m dramatic, you know, it's, it moves around like that on the album. But in general, it has this uplifting type of tempo, which is not, you know, dragging yourself down. And it's, it's the message is to get yourself up and question things and look at life the way you want to see it, not the way people tell you it should be seen as. As, you know? some, as somebody who addresses so much within your lyricism from mythology to having this, you know, really, uh, I, I've always said that this is a very brutally honest album. I feel like it is, you know, it does have an uplifting message, but it is telling you like, you know, no pun intended, that Rome wasn't built in one day. Like, uh, it really right. does have like a, if you want to succeed and get better, you got to, you know, put the work into it. Is Absolutely. There... Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in hard work and, and that, you know, it's not, it's not because you give one effort that it's going to happen. Like, you have to give multiple efforts and you got to believe in it. You have to be the biggest believer in your product and what you do. And, and, and failures are going to be in there, but I don't like the fact that we celebrate failures now. Like I, I'm not, I'm not part of that system of it's okay to fail. No, it's not okay. It's okay only because you get to learn from it. Right. And you don't repeat it. Right. Yeah. So like, so, so I, I, I'm very against that idea that, uh, you know, uh, 
failing at something should be celebrated. I, I, I'm not going to be that that person. You know what I mean? Like I've never believed in that. I've every door has been closed in my face growing up. Every single opportunity, people laughed when I said I'm going to start a band. Even when I started X Day, I'm going to do the Roman thing, and the, all the Viking guys were like, "How dare you try that? It's going to be a joke, right?" But I did it. I went against the grain because that's what I represent more in my heritage and everything. And I wanted to express that because I know there's other people that'll dig it, you know. And at the same time, I did it for myself. So I, to answer your question, I, I think I think that. Um, uh, it, it's a it, it is a brutally honest album because I on this record I'm not it's not an open book like Cataclysm for example which is also social based a lot but it, it brings you into a place where you could decide the outcome of it regarding your own life right this is more like so some of this stuff like Ghost of My Father thirty six fifty six these are songs that are super personal to me like I'm very introverted I know I talk a lot when I'm in close counter with people I I know. But I'm very introverted in my own ways, and and for me to even touch those subjects and those areas is is a lot, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Well, you know, when I was listening to Unconquered, really in the heart of uh, 2020, and uh, I was thinking that this was the soundtrack that you would create when Rome was burning and Nero was playing the fiddle. In a way, right. I feel like that was the sort of a uh, soundtrack behind it, and you know with Ex Deo, it almost seems like with Cataclysm and Ex Deo, there's a lot of, you know, it almost seems like there's like research involved in the lyricism. There's a lot of looking outward, but would you say that for this Invictus album, Unstoppable, this was very much looking uh, inward in a way. And that's a very, uh, I don't want to say dangerous, but that's a very, you know, uh, crazy way of, you know, diving into your artistic process. Did looking inward maybe open up new doors for what you would do on a future Invictus album or even with any other project? Um, yes, I, 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 I like it is dangerous because people have a perception of who you are. And then when you open up a little bit and they might be a little bit, oh, he's like that or whatever, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, but as you if you know me real well i don't really care like i i will do what i feel is right and you know um i've always been the guy under the radar i've done i think i've done much more in my career than a lot of people that are way more celebrated than i am and that it's not the type of things that that bother me it's not the type of things that i that i that i kind of procrastinate around you know i do my thing for me and i do it for the fans that listen to my music, like, especially when I hear bands say, oh, we only play music for ourselves. We don't give a fuck, like, whatever happens. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to swear here. Please do. But I, 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 you know, I never believed in that. If you're playing music for the masses, you need to kind of, you know, put it out there for the masses as well. And you have to think about what the fans would like, musically at least. Lyrically, you have to be yourself, right? And that's where it becomes, you know, this is who I am, you know, take it or leave it type of thing. So uh, I'm for the people always been, I, I, and, and I think this record is kind of giving that, you know what I mean? Like, it's a very anti-conformist type of album. It's not about listen to everything they tell you. Yes, it is how it is, blah, 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 all that stuff. I, I don't believe in that. Metal was never created on that, per, on that premises. You know, this was the rebellion version of the world, you know, in music. And I, I still firmly believe in that, you know. Yeah. I mean, when you look at every single album that you've made throughout your catalog, whether it would be, you know, Kaluga from uh, Ex Deo or Sorcery from Cataclysm or this Unstoppable album, do you think that the message or the meaning of it could evolve over time as you evolve as an artist? Or do you prefer if every album that you create is more or less a snapshot of who you are at that particular time? Uh, real good question. So I never heard that question before, which I really enjoy by the way um I, I think again i think it's a bit of both I, I i have changed a little bit in my way of seeing the world because i have more experience right so as you get more experience in life you start understanding things that you did wrong in the beginning and now you learn from it and you try not to repeat your mistakes at least i do uh, do that you know uh, but it's also a snapshot of the current situation right uh you know next record i might feel in a different mood and it'll be a bit different uh, this is how I feel right now. Uh, the fact that I'm the way I am, there's always going to be a little bit of darkness everywhere and in, in, in sprinkled around all my albums because I, I, I don't know if it's an Italian thing uh, in our family, but when I was a kid, my grandma would always tell me, look out for the snakes, 
you know, look out for what the, the one thing that could kill you, that can hurt you. It's a Jewish it's thing too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We're very similar yeah. with a lot of things, uh, and that that's the one thing, and that, and that's become it comes from hardship, right? So, I I, I always look at let's say I, I you know when I first built my house. Uh, I, I went in and everybody's like, oh, it's beautiful. I loved everything. And I'm like, oh, there's a little crack here. Like I could see all the little defects that like nobody would care about, but I would, you know what I mean? So I, I, and as long as I'm like that, I think my music will always have that questioning part that makes it dark, you know, because why, <laughs> you know, it's like, so, or, or this is wrong, you know what I mean? So it, it's, it's, that's just the way I'm brought up, you know, that's in my DNA. Yeah. Well, you know, I, this is a part of the discussion I've been having, you know, like, cause darkness is obviously a great fuel for creativity and all, you know, agony. It obviously creates a cathartic, uh, release right. for when you create music. But I've also said that artists too could become victims of their own products. So when darkness or agony is a source of inspiration, does that also maybe make the creative process rather deteriorating too? Uh, it depends because I feel that the world is like most people um, are struggling always. Uh, they, I don't think everybody's hunky dory every day, um, but that's that's not a lot. I'll give you an example of a band that I think you know, and, and it's not in my in our genre, so I think I'm gonna step in it. Uh, you know, a band like Shine Down, for example. I just saw rock. them. Yeah, great band. I used to love them, uh, and the reason I say I used to love them is because that guy had a lot of demons, the singer, and all his pr first records were dark, and the lyrics were crazy, like you know, even a song like 45 and all. The, he had like big hits right in my opinion and i would connect with more most of those type of tracks but then he said you know i beat my demons i'm happy now and he's jumping up and down and everything's cool and i find that the music now is like completely different like it's way more uppity and more like nye, nye, like that and it's like it, you could tell that he's not and that it's not about me it's about him if he's happy like that then that's cool and that's his but as a fan I'm not connecting no more because that's not feeding my soul. You understand what I mean? So, Definitely. so I, I think that artists, uh, when they are at their, when they are representing their miseries in a way or their dark thoughts, is where they're the most creative. Definitely, and that's where the, that's where the outpour comes out strongest. So, I think there's a lot of big records going to come out of the pandemic because that put a lot of people in the, in their place and realizing that hey. This entire matrix or world we're living in is could stop. You know what I mean? Everything that I believe in was a machine is done. And now it's like, holy crap, like it made you think. It made you think heavily. Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of great records coming out, like because people were just writing. And so, so, um, yeah, you can't stop an artist from the output, the output, you know. It, it's an unfortunate but also blessing at the same time that we are, when we are at our worst, art is at its best. And it's not just for music, too, that the pandemic, I was just at the Armory show, which is almost kind of like the NAM show for visual art in a way for galleries yeah. and whatnot. And, awesome. and as somebody who went to art school, studied art history, I could tell you before it was looking at a banana peel nailed to a fucking piece of wood, calling it, giving some deep meaning. But the pandemic wiped all that shit off the off the earth. So I, th I think uh, the people most susceptible to COVID was bad art. So or not even the people, but <laughs> but, but um. Yeah. So it makes sense, doesn't it? Though yeah. it does. And one of my favorite albums is a uh, Nevermore's "Dreaming Neon Black," which was a very uh, dark personal record for War Old Dane in a way. So totally true but at the same time you're in a band you're collaborating with people so everybody you know has their own different experiences and their own trials and tribulations so when you're in a band is it better if everybody is on the same page in the songwriting process or could people being in their own little worlds or feeling their own things actually maybe help add to the creativity right another great question and the thing is 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 um the way that you have chemistry it's built on people that are playing with you that have the same, at some point, something touches everybody and the feeling's mutual, right? So the reason me and JF work so well together is that we have that same, he doesn't talk, right? He's not a vocalist, he's not, he's in a tour bus, he's just happy to be there, he doesn't say a word. But I can tell that he processes so much stuff. And where does it come out of? Here right and on the guitar and he says he's a, such a great writer and i think um chris is very similar in that in that department although he's he talks a lot because he's a singer also um 
I think that he has a lot built in. And then when it comes out, it comes dramatic, right? So JF will come out more aggressive and melodic. He'll come out more dramatic. So I think all these things put out with my lyrical concept and, and my approach, I think fits. And when it doesn't fit, you're not doing good music. And that's where you're not connecting. Right, and I think the biggest records I've ever I've ever came out in metal. I think uh, had that mutual all four guys, all four five guys together feeling the same thing, and that's what came out. You know, even an album like uh, At the Gate Slaughter of the Soul. You know, that record came out, and it was just like instant hit because you could tell all the emotion the guys put in there was the same, channeling the same uh, direction, and people hit it. It hit a lot of people that thought the same. And that that's that's the thing, and that's the key in my opinion. You know? Yeah. And Alexi Leho, uh, God rest his soul. I mean, he. I remember in an interview uh, that he said one time where, like, he actually looks for trouble sometimes when he writes lyrics because uh, that just becomes such a jackpot in a way. When it comes to like writing anything for you, when you're thinking of ideas, isolation being such a great fuel for creativity. Do you prefer right. to be alone in your own sort of element when cultivating ideas, or could maybe being in the company of other bandmates or a producer or just anybody maybe actually help? bring some new ideas so so this is what's going on right now like we are in the middle of writing a new cataclysm record right now okay? Hell yeah. and and so that's nobody really knows that but i'm going to put it out here because the question deserves that answer and we've been working individually on it uh for i would say about two months right and now comes the point where the songs are super strong but to bring it to epic level we need to get to the, together so everybody's flying out here in Florida uh, in November, and we're gonna put the final touches for it and then record it in December. That's the plan. So, so basically, um, we have to get together. Like you know, even if you think you got it all figured out on your own, there's this thing where you're face to face, and then you can arrange and fix all the little things that are missing. You know what I mean? And then that, and that we might rearrange songs completely different being together. You know, and and I think that's important because of technology and because we all live in different states and different countries right now that makes it hard for us to to be together all the time but we do take the time to go back to where we all started in our high school times and and in the garage of our parents driving everybody crazy in the neighborhood uh you know we want to go back to that and have that feeling again you know that's very important uh the digital world is kind of destroying that fabric which we want to persevere and keep as much as possible, you yeah. know, so. Well, I could tell you that in a live Cataclysm show, that feeling is always there. When I just saw you with Deicide, when I've seen you with Soulfly, you. every show I've seen, there's a community and a love in that pit that we're all feeling at once. So yeah. if awesome. the digital age may have hindered that with the songwriting, but at the live show, nothing will take that away. And going into your live presence too, when you're bringing songs from all around the timeline of your catalog, whether it be for any, with regardless of what project that you're in, does it almost like add another layer of context? If you're, let's say you play an unconquered song and then you play like a song from 20 years before that and so on and so right. forth, like do you think that adds another layer of meaning behind it when you're bringing it to a live setting for the audience to feel? I think I think it, it um, especially for the live audience. For me, it's it's my, it's all my product and it's all my writing. So so for me, it's 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 different uh, periods of my time and my emotional state that are that are on stage, and I'm still connecting with fans. But for the fans, a song, let's say at the edge of the world, uh, for example, or push the venom or something like that, one of those tracks is going to hit somebody differently than the other because at that point in their lives that song meant something to them like harder than let's say a hit for example that's generalizing everybody a specific song you know we we, we get people that are writing us say hey that song man you never play it live that because they want to hear that song because that specific song they probably heard it fifty thousand times they needed it at that time right it's therapeutic so I do believe music's therapeutic. And uh, as long as it's therapeutic, I think it's gonna be very real. And I need it 
because I don't see shrinks. So <laughs> that's, the, that's, that, that's the, for me, the, the, the therapy. So I, I have to have the output. That's what puts so many records out, you know, like I need it, you know, you're always going to have that so, one fan at the, at every show you play. It's like, Oh, could you play that deep cut from like that demo split that you did before even cataclysm track? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the bonus track on the split. That's like only available, like in South Korea somewhere that like is right. on like three tapes in the world. Yeah. I want, I want to hear you play that song. I want to play the number, yeah, the number 98 on the Spotify list. Yeah, play that one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's circling yeah. back it's harder to... with all these records. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, uh, circling back to Invictus, too, because when you go from uh, You Will Know Who I Am to ending with uh, Keeping the Wolves at Bay, you know, we discussed that there's personal subject matters on here and whatnot. Did every song, does every song call for its own approach depending on what you want to address in it? Or regardless of what the meaning is, there's always a similar method behind the madness. There, there is, there is uh, songs that are specific to something and there's songs on here that are, are, are still open a little bit to interpretation and depends on when you read it, oh man, it hits me in this way. I, 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 I feel what he's saying, but to me it's like this and that's okay, right? Because I'm not gonna be specifically writing, you know, something. The ideas in general is there, and, and 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 what it is is just to open your eyes to things, right? And it's okay to question everything. Like I I I I don't understand why it's a problem to question things, like it never was, right? So so I I this record is just to question things, protect your freedoms, a lot of it because I think a lot of it is on the balance, you know, more and more, and I I feel that that I needed to speak about it, and I didn't want to be political. It's not about politics. You know, I have a shirt that I wear a lot called defund the politicians, you know, because I, I, I you know, that's what I think should happen. You know, I, I, I think they're all liars, all of them, both sides, and they just want their own gain and power and that's it. And it's, I am not political. This is social. This is more about living together, you know, and then stopping all divisions about things because if somebody has a different opinion, everybody should have it. Everybody should have their opinion, you know, you don't have to follow somebody that you don't agree with, you know, that's it, you know, like, so I'm anti-cancel culture, I'm all about freedom of speech. If you take that away from you or me, we don't have any more uh, outlets to talk about. I think that's important that we, 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 we keep that going, you know, even if sometimes things are hurtful that you hear about. It also, uh, um, you know, opens up dialogue, which is important, you know, and, and if you if you just dismiss everything all the time, then at some point you're creating something on the other side that's not going to be good. Uh, you know, the, you know, in my opinion, is, is humans are made to communicate and, and we have to do that. You know? If art invokes discussion, that's the, one of the greatest things art can ever do. If, it, if it's just invoking something, yes. if it, it, yeah, like whether, whether the art bonds friendships together, I can't tell you how many friends I currently have just from attending Cataclysm shows. And, oh, really cool. uh, but like, and also if art creates enemies, I can't tell you how many people in art school hated my guts because of my certain opinions, but it led to an experience that wouldn't have been there had it, that piece was not right. made. So. Right. That's the beauty of art. Well, they're losing out because of that, in my opinion. You know, you shouldn't hate nobody because of it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And you know what? I miss the days when you go to concerts and nobody's talking about politics. Yeah. They're talking about this guy's record, that guy's album, this band sucks, this band's cool. <laughs> like, I, I remember those days. I love those days. I hope that they come back as the, soon as possible. I haven't seen too much, many of that. I, I go to thousands of shows a year. I haven't seen too many of that, actually. And uh, most... Okay. And most of the time when, when I see two people talking politics, it's as if somebody threw like a tear gas canister in there. Everybody else disperses away. Yeah, from nobody it. cares. Yeah, nobody wants that. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't belong in concerts. I think that's the escape, right? Yeah. Like I, when, I, when I'm on stage, I always say, this is our church where everybody's united. We're all rebels in here. We're all outcasts. You know, we're, we're all the, 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 the people that at some point in our, in our lives, people look at us and, oh, they listen to metal. You know, it's like the 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 the, <laughs> the 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 place where you shouldn't go you know so it's it's i i always appreciated that that we have a refuge where everybody can come together and be the same and mm. um i always loved that about metal yeah. it, it was it was my calling as a kid in high school where i didn't belong anywhere i couldn't fit with anybody i saw two three metal heads i said these guys look cool i'm gonna hang out with those guys and then with those guys cataclysm was born that's just exactly how it happened and and to me I owe everything to this music, you know, this style, the genre, because it opened up an opportunity for me to, to express myself. 
I, I, I won't have been able to do it with anything else, you know? It's, it's just the way it is. Yep, of course. And the final question I wanted to ask you is, is actually kind of going to the business side of things because you are involved in management as well, which, uh, you know, uh, musicians and what I've noticed is really just uh, singers in general in the metal scene are also involved in management, like Des from Devil Drivers involved in management. Right. Angela Gossow is now involved in management. Has working with other bands and helping bands, you know, either tour or get their name out there, has that also maybe been a source of inspiration for you as an artist in a way? Or is the artistic side of you and the business side of you like two completely separate sides of who Maurizio is? They're two different sides. And, and I think that the business side, because I'm very tough in my business at dealings, I think that that kind of maybe hurt some of my artistic side because some people get pissed off because I'm, I'm fighting for other artists and they don't like that. So Cataclysm obviously got punished, especially in the States, uh, especially when I started an agency uh, for touring because I thought that it was very unfair for artists that we didn't have choices. And, and uh, if you were mid-level or lower level band growing, you had a very hard time going anywhere. Uh, if you, you had to obey to one agency and, and I created pretty much capitalism inside the world by creating another agency and, and competing, right? And a lot of agents didn't like that and we can't hit him with that, but we'll hit him with his band, you know? So, so I had a little bit of that uh, uh, happen to me. Um, and and uh, I started this for the reason of helping bands. I was touring with a lot of the bands that I manage now and, and seeing them suffer. And I was like, dude, I can help you because it helped me doing it this way. Maybe you want to do this this way. And then they asked me, hey, would you like to manage the band? And that's how it started. And then it became a company because I, I was able to do a decent job, I believe, with a lot of my artists that are still growing at the moment. And uh, you know, I, I keep doing it. Sometimes it's very stressful, man. Sometimes I wish I wasn't doing it <laughs> because it, it it does eat eat up a lot of your energy. But uh, uh, the part of me still believes that I need to be here to help, you know, uh, developing bands. A lot of managements go only and grab the big bands, you know, oh, this one's making money or this one. I, I have bands from all spectrums. Yeah, you know? I, I want to thank you, too, because uh, I know uh, that you uh, were in charge of the Hypocrisy Flesh God Apocalypse uh, tour from 2019. I yes. want to thank you for bringing Animus on that bill as well, oh, cool. because that is one of the best progressive tech death bands. Their yeah. their album uh, was just insane. I interviewed them on that tour. They were great guys. So I appreciate you. Band, yeah. Yeah. Not only are you bringing our favorite bands here, but you're bringing a lot of new bands that our people are going down another rabbit hole with. Yeah, yeah, and I and I and I'm very strong believer that you know to to, to develop because that's the future. Definitely. All these bands are getting old up there, including myself. We're gonna have to have new bands to take over, you know, if we want to keep this going. Well, that's when you will call your style near death metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time and for always coming on the show. It's always great to, to uh, talk with you. Is there just uh, anything else with this new Invictus record that you'd like to promote? Uh, a Cataclysm, X Deo, maybe a tour with all three bands at once. It, that'll never happen because I won't survive it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, just just a big thank you for everybody that's been supporting uh, my, my projects and, and everything I've done in my life. It's been always an honest an honest output. Uh, there's never been a, a, a fake anything in what I do, you know? So I really appreciate that. Stream the new record, uh, push it and share it and enjoy it. As long as it fills your heart, I'm happy. So thank you so much, man. Uh, again, to see you is always a pleasure, brother. Appreciate it. Anytime, man. Everybody, Maurizio of Cataclysm, Ex Deo, and Invictus. Be sure to check out Unstoppable. We will see you next time on Heavy New York. Cheers, brother.